and trained to assist in the defense of India if so needed. But it's important to remember that none of the treaty relations between the states and the uh, British required them to serve or support the British outside of India. The aim was to help with the defense of India uh, from within the, in India. But changes at the turn of the 20th century, so China, the Boxer Rebellion, uh, South Africa and Somaliland saw the deployment in one form or another of what had become known by then as Imperial Service Troops. And thus, at the outbreak of the First World War in August 1914, the scheme has been in operation for uh, just over 25 years, and the states had demonstrated their support on a number of occasions, including some overseas deployments. But uh, a lack of investment during that 25 years had led to a number of weaknesses and deficiencies in armament, in establishments, and essentially in training. And it meant that come the war, there was some serious catching up to do. But within hours and days of war being declared, virtually every ruling prince had offered uh, the services of his state to the King Emperor. And for those states that supported Imperial Service troops, about 40 at the time, uh, these offers included the mobilization of all of their troops, personal deployment by the ruler, either to the front or in any other form that was deemed uh, sent, uh, uh, helpful, as well as financial and other material support. Those states that did not support Imperial Service troops made similar offers of service by the ruler or services of the state. And I think it's worth pausing just briefly to ask ourselves, well, why did the princes or the rulers respond like this? Um, as I said, their treaty obligations did not require them to serve uh, outside of India. It's not